Interpretation of Accounts Question 2016, Star T Limited. So, um, five things we have to get here. The first one is cash purchases a period of credit received from trade creditors is two months. As you can see, there's nothing there on purchases. So how am I going to find my purchases figure? Well, we're told a couple of things. We're told that the period of credit received from creditors is two months. Um, so I'm told that my period received is two months. That means it takes me two months to pay back my creditors. The formula for finding that two months is here. Creditors divided by credit purchases multiplied by 12. In this case is equal to two months. I know everything except for my credit purchases. There, if I fill in this, um, I'll be able to find credit purchases. So, 90,000 is my creditors. I can see that down here. Um, I don't know my credit purchases. I'm multiplying by 12 because my answer is in months. It's two. My credit purchases works out to be 540,000. I found credit purchases. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for cash purchases. How am I going to find cash purchases? Well, if I look at my top of my uh, P&L here, I have my sales figure, and I have my opening stock, closing stock, and I have my cost of goods sold. Well, I know what my cost of goods sold is. My cost of goods sold is going to be opening stock, um, less uh, opening stock plus purchases, less closing stock, and therefore I'll find my cost of goods sold. So I can fill this table in here. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this as a kind of a brief explanation, and I can find that the missing figure here is going to be purchases. Therefore, 55,000 plus purchases less closing stock is 752. If I fill in everything, I can find out what my purchases figure is. Purchases works out to be 762,000. And then I have my total purchases. I have my credit purchases. So total purchases is made up of cash and credit purchases. Um, so obviously, once I know my credit and I know my total, I can find out what cash purchases is. That works out at 222,000. Second thing we're asked to find is dividend yield. Again, we're going to take a little bit of work to find it. Um, so the first thing we have to do here is get our um, dividend yield formula, which is DPS over share price. I don't know my dividends per share, so I need to work that out. The formula for dividends per share is as such. It is total dividend minus preference dividend divided by number of ordinary shares. So I know... Um, my total dividend and I know my number of ordinary shares, I don't know preference dividend. How do I figure it out? Well, from the question, it's 300,000 here multiplied by 5%, works out at 15,000. That's my preference dividend. I now know all of this formula to get my dividend per share. So if I fill in everything, I now have my dividend per share. And my dividend per share amount is going to be um, 50,000, which is my dividends paid. Minus my preference dividends of 15 divided by the number of ordinary shares of 500,000 over here. Works out at 7 cent. I have my dividend per share now. I can go back to my uh, dividend yield formula, which is this. Uh, DPS dividend per share, which I worked out to be 7. Divided by share price in cent, which you can see here is 125 cent. That's my market value of one share. That's my share price. Um, so I multiply that out, multiply by 100 over 1, and it gets me 5.6%. That's my dividend yield. The third thing I need to find here is my price earnings ratio. So for my price earnings ratio here, my formula is going to be my share price in cent divided by my earnings per share. Not dividends per share, but this time earnings per share. Um, so I need to find out what my earnings per share is. I know my share price is 125 cent. My earnings per share formula is this one here. It is my uh, net profit minus my preference dividends, which I've already worked out to be 7,500. Uh, sorry, 15,000. Um, so my net profit is given at uh, 133,000. My number of ordinary shares is also obviously given in the question. It always is 500,000. So, if I plug in all those figures, I can find out what my earnings per share is. My earnings per share works out at 23.6 cent. So, I have my earnings per share. I can go back to my formula now to find my price earnings ratio. My price earnings ratio is going to work out my share price, which is going to be 125 cent. Divided by my earnings per share of 23.6, it works out at 5.3 years. 
the game always shows the units, 5.3 years. Return on capital employed, just quickly going through, it's just the formula here which is net profit before interest divided by capital employed. My net profit is 133,000, my interest is 12,000. My net profit before I took away the interest therefore is 133 plus 12 divided by my capital employed which is my two balancing figures in the balance sheet 1,128,000. Multiplied by 100 over 1 my, my answer is 12.85%. Very last one I have here is dividend cover. So again nice and quickly my formula for dividend cover is my net profit minus my preference dividends divided by total dividend minus preference dividend. I have everything. My net profit I have in the question at 133,000. My uh, preference dividend I've worked out to be 15,000. My total dividend I've worked out to be 50,000. If I put in all of that, I can find out my answer is 3.37 times. That's the end to the 2016 question.